elementary school, I drew a lot of clowns and stuff, and like drew my action figures exploding and stuff. Um, but it was not until midway through college that I was fighting to be successful materially and monetarily, and it was just I was in. I was miserable, so I had been making art while I was going to school for business and communications. And I um, realized that I'd rather just be happy. And to now I go by divided mass, and that just organically arose over the past few years. But it is kind of mentality. It's everything, you know, there's so much fragmented stuff in this world. It's just um, all divided up. So I'm looking to bring all sorts of various random stuff together to make a new whole. Sometimes it is metal, sometimes paint, sometimes wood, sometimes glass, all of them together. Sometimes, sometimes it's just what I find taking a seat on a walk. Teaching is pretty much my only supplemented way of living right now, and that happens on weekends. So just uh, usually just Saturday, Sunday, but there's some week um, classes that I teach. Yes, classes that are It's fun. I love teaching. It's just to be able to share this yeah. like substance that is usually 99% of the time seen as fragile and breakable and brittle and to, to be able to share that as this glowing liquid, like glowing orange, moving like honey, uh, people are fully captivated. And once again, it's that just being present and getting out of thinking of bills or a job or family or whatever, just like being here with the material, this glass elicits your full attention. Can't be anywhere but here. That's why I love it. That's why I love it. And the fact that I create just something that's that need to to keep keep people um, not keep people but bring people together and just show them the power and the peace that comes from building something up or making something. Like there is something so far beyond what our senses perceive and um, creativity elicits that. So that's why it's such a big part of my life to share it and to, to partake it. So Mondays I start at the homeless shelter. I work with kids um, with an organization called Draw Change and we yeah, I work with, with kids who don't have a home at the moment and um, give them a time to have control over what they're doing and what's going on in front of them and create and goof off and just have a warm and courageable space. Tuesdays are, um, I go to Emory to the Winship Cancer Institute and I work in the chemotherapy infusion room. Just kind of give access to people tools to focus on making art or drawing or painting and getting their mind off eight hours of toxic flow into their apartment. Whenever I'm not working with patients, I'm doing my own art, so that's kind of filtered in. I go rock climbing on Tuesdays with my friends. And, uh, Wednesdays is the nursing homes, so. Um, I uh, work with a nonprofit called Ageless Interaction, and we go into nursing homes and, um, once again, just boost people's spirits with art. There is this particular woman in a nursing home that, when I first met her, she was like small and shrunken. And she would talk like this. She was so quiet. And like, <laughs> and we started making art together, and week after week after week, I would, I would uh, walk in and say hey, and, um, just 
see her for the first time. Just like quiet, shriveled up. And by the end of the day, oh my gosh, I did not know I had this in me. Like, look what I did. Come on. She would just shake like she was just so proud and alive. And um, just to see that transition in a couple hours of um, working with someone, really just letting them work. You know, pointing out things every once in a while and helping them along. Um, but to see that shift and that glow in someone's eyes become real, it was, it still is, it still happens every single day I go in there. It's um, just a massive upheaval of this like aloneness, this quietness, this um, under stimulation, under connection. And then to elicit this fire and this liveliness, and it reminds me of youth. And she has told me, when I create, I feel young again. That's everything. It's huge. That's the power of creation. Thursdays is church on the street. Okay, it's kind of, I wouldn't call it like a homeless shelter. I guess it's like a homeless haven or a community haven that accepts everybody, including homeless people. And they do a lot of um, community-oriented stuff. They eat meals together all the time. And the art program, I was asked to just help get the ball rolling for that. Excuse me. And I think it's once every week or so, every week or two, we'll um, just meet up at schools with this big lime green and bright blue truck. Going in and you know hosting activities, really just a whole range from like caveman style stone uh, fireplace building to like on a computer writing out images to be printed with the 3D printer. So it's a huge range of stuff. I don't do it justice because um, you know words are inadequate to provide or to. Uh, describe what is provided to the kids. It's, you know, what I do is pretty simple. I put art materials in front of people and I make sure that they know it's a relaxed, casual environment that we're going to forget about the pain and forget about the worry, the stress of not having a home, the stress of having medical condition, and just focus on this. I think the connectivity of art and the sharing of, of art is why I'm on Earth.